Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nikon TV here on Facebook. This is our 21st episode. We're here with a lot of new product releases that we're going to talk about so much that we had to bring a second host for the show. This is Chris Ogunek from Nikon Canada. And uh, welcome to the show, my friend. This is weird because we sit next to each other every day and here we are doing a show as if I'm meeting him for the first time. It's not the case. But uh, you're going to help me out today. I absolutely am. <laughs> with all the releases we've done. Um, and we've come out with over the last 24 hours. So let's get right to it. The last time we were on Nikon TV was back in December. We didn't even do an episode in January because we were so busy with CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, biggest show of the year for electronics. We came out with four new products. We have eight to talk about, so let's get right into it. One of the things that I want to talk about right off the bat is our new update for the video community. We, we're all over the board with this, guys. We have uh, products in video, in mirrorless, and DSLR, cool pics, which we're going to talk about. But the one for ProRes RAW is great for um, video um, content producers because it allows them to shoot right out of the HDMI slot into an Atomos Ninja 5 monitor using 12-bit ProRes RAW. Great for anybody doing color grading and it gives you the flexibility of shooting uh, in different um, white balances that you can correct later on. And if you're shoot used to shooting in log, you don't have to deal with the 800 ISO floor. You can actually start shooting at 100 ISO. So for anybody shooting in this, uh, looking to shoot in this format, I know that's what they've been waiting for for a year since we announced it at CES 2019. It's finally out. It's yours for the taking. Uh, there is a fee that you have to uh, pay to, and bring it into our service department in order you, for you to get this installed. But the good news is for anybody that got the Z6 Filmmakers kit, it is a free of charge uh, upgrade. So make sure you check that out. I have one right here installed on my Z6. Um, with that feature and I've tried it a couple of times and it's great. I mean, for you guys out there that are shooting in ProRes RAW, you know the benefits of ProRes RAW, but um, if you're looking at this upgrade, do your research, make sure you have the right software, you know about the workflow, you've investigated our log uh, option and you have the right hardware, meaning to say the Ninja, um, etc. So you're gonna need all that. But exciting news, it's here guys for the video community and um, uh, check out our website for more information. So. That's the ProRes RAW. I'm going to hand it off to you, Chris, while I catch my breath, because we're going to get <laughs> through seven more big announcements. Let's you burned through that. I love yeah. it. Um, so I'm going to talk about one of our newest Coolpix products. This is the P950. So this is obviously an update from our P900, and essentially takes everything that everybody loved about the P900 and just expands on it. So it has the same optical zoom, which is a 24 to 2,000 millimeter optical zoom, which is just absolutely phenomenal. One of the things that was improved, if you are gonna need that long of a, if you're gonna be using that long of a zoom, is a really good VR system. So we've actually improved this up to five and a half stops worth of VR with the P950. So you're able to still shoot at really, really long focal lengths while still making sure that the camera's going to stabilize that for you. Um, we also have the ability now to shoot at 4K video. So previously with the P900, you had 1080p. Now we're up to 4K. We have a much better EVF in the P950. So it's essentially the same specs as what you're gonna get with the P1000. So it's the higher res and larger EVF. So it's much easier when you're actually shooting all day long with it to be looking through that and to see much crisper, much clearer shot when you're actually looking at it. Uh, you have full raw capability, so when you're shooting your NRWs now, you can go in the post-processing, uh, edit them a little bit more, get a little bit more out of them if you really want to go and push uh, what you're able to do with the camera. And then lastly, what you're able to um, see here is it actually has a hot shoe now, so just like the P1000, which, okay, obviously you can go and throw a flash on there, which is great, but you can also go and use another Nikon accessory because of that flash hot shoe. We have a DF. M1. This is actually our dot sight that is really, really helpful for when you're going shooting at really extreme focal lengths and you happen to lose your subject for a second or two. Well, what happens is you now look through that dot sight, which is at a very wide angle. It allows you to recenter and refocus where you're looking without having to back off, fully zoom out of the actual um, environment and then zoom back into your subject. So that little dot sight is really, really helpful when you're shooting at extreme, let's say, uh, focal lengths of 1,000, uh, 1, 2,000 mils of a tiny little bird in a tree. Well, throw that DFM1 on there and you're all set to go. So that's the 
Coolpix P950. And I just want to say, because at CES, this won an award for uh, one of our best cameras out there. So that was uh, an award-winning uh, product at CES. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that this lens was probably the most waited for lens since we announced the Z6 and the Z7 um, for, the, for the entire new Z system. This is the Z70-200 f2.8 S lens. So, to be honest, I don't really, yeah, but like, can we just, just, take, just, let's take a moment, let's just take a moment for this. this? Because people have been waiting for, oh. waiting to get into the Z system because um, of this. Yes, the, some people that have been waiting to get into the Z system have not gotten it because we didn't have a 70 to 200 in the system. It's a bread and butter lens for a lot of people. Absolutely. And to be honest, it's here. And there really isn't much I have to say about it. There's a lot I can say about it. But to be totally honest, our older 70 to 200 FL version, uh, that was, if you read the reviews, pretty much touted as the greatest 70 to 200 ever made. Well, this takes that just a step further. Not only are you going to be getting better sharpness, faster autofocus, uh, amazing weather sealing, you have all that, but it now works natively with the Z system without needing the FTZ adapter. Uh, there were a couple things I want to kind of point out without going into um, too much detail on the sharpness and the bokeh. It was, one, uh, you have this actual um, lens display on it. So what you're actually seeing here is very similar to what you see with the uh, 24 to 70 f 2.8 Z lens and with the 58 mil knocked. So this little guy right here can actually change to show you your focal length. It can go and show you your focal distance, your aperture. You can change it on the fly. And it's just a helpful little um, display that can kind of show you exactly what it is uh, you're looking at at that moment. Uh, I think the, that's important because it's a flyby wire focusing, so people need to see where they're focusing if they're doing it manually. Exactly. Uh, and then one other thing that we've actually never had on any of our lenses is having two lens fo uh, function buttons. So on a large number of our lenses, we'll have one lens function button, and most of the high-end uh, DSLRs will have the ability to customize this to be pretty much one of 10, 15, 20 options. But now, with this lens, we have two. So now you can go and customize your Z camera just that much more than what you'd be able to do in the past. But uh, one thing I will say is that with this second lens function button, if you, well, the lens is out now, so no one can go and do it, but if you want to grab this lens and put it on your Z6 or your Z7, you, Mark Cruz, cannot go and customize this lens function too, but you actually need a new firmware update exactly. for the body. So make sure that if you have already purchased a lens, if you're going to purchase a lens and you have a Z6 or a Z7, when you go and pick up your lens, make sure you download the new firmware for it to make sure that you can go and fully customize and take use of this new 70 to 200. You know what I'm looking forward to that lens? The minimum focusing distance. Mm. Uh, that For wedding photographers, this is a staple in their bag. You're working in tight environments. Uh, it's been reduced now to half a meter when you're shooting at 70 millimeters. So previous lens were 1.1 1 1 .1 meter. Typical, the VR2 70 to 200 was 1.5 meter. That's a big game changer. You've reduced it by a full meter. So people shooting for weddings in those tight environments, it's uh, that's a game changer. Is it my turn? It's your turn. Uh, okay, I encroached on your <laughs> time, so I'm going to get it back. And we're going to talk another about another product that was released at CES, okay? We're going to shift gears. We're mm. talking about Z with the new uh, ProRes RAW update with your uh, new lens 70 to 200. But look at this box here. Don't get fooled. It's not a Z system box. You see the D there? We've now uh, released a, another high-end uh, DSLR production. This is the D780, folks. This is the box for the D780. And it's not just the box, I have the product right here. It's actually already on the market. So last we spoke, um, this wasn't on the market yet. This is the D780, it's a successor to the D750. Okay, so what are the um, top points about it? I mean, when you look at it at first, the megapixels, 24 megapixels are the same. You might look at the autofocus system. I've been looking at our YouTube videos and people are saying, well, it's the same focusing uh, number of points, same uh, resolution, but this is a brand new sensor here, guys. This is uh, 24 megapixel, but it's using the Z6 sensor. So the ISO goes up to 51,200 ISO. So it's two stops higher than the native ISO as of, as of, of a D750. 
50, which is at this point, it's almost a six year old camera. It's about five and a half years old. And everything that you've come to love about the D750, this basically puts it on steroids, if I can use that term. Um, uh, the great feel, the ergonomics of it, there have been some ergonomic enhancements to bring it up to date, such as where the live view uh, switch is positioned, such as where the ISO button is positioned. But in terms of video, for a lot, this is our first, what we would call a hybrid camera, because it has all the benefits of the optical system of the DSLR, of the D750, uh, 51 point, but now using the D5 algorithm inside of it. But now all the video features, almost all of them from the Z6 are inherited now in the D780. So things you couldn't even do in a D750, 4K video, 120 frames per second slow motion. Um, you know, we have new HLG uh, uh, option here to go from the uh, HDMI port. Uh, but most importantly, the autofocus sensors using live view have inherited the 273 point system from the Z6. So why is that important to people? Because you can now reliably autofocus using the live view system. And uh, for video people, they'll understand. You can put this on a gimbal and reliably allow it to focus for you. You don't need a, um, a system such as a... Uh, like a follow focus. Follow focus, follow focus mechanism. So um, you can do that now reliably, but what I like about it is just being able to shoot, you know, from a hands grip like this using the live view screen and allowing that eye detect to work. So I actually found it really practical just shooting from the hip, for example, and pointing it at my subject and allowing that eye autofocus to go and using it with like 100% reliability. So that's what I really love. I did find that the optical viewfinder was actually a little bit more snappier using that 51 points there and looking through the optical viewfinder, people that have come to love and trust, that is a key thing for you guys at home when you're looking at all these options because it's about, you know, around the same price as the Z6, maybe a little bit, a couple hundred dollars more. Here in Canada, it's MSR, uh, the advertised price is $29.99. So it's $3,000 for the body. So you might be thinking to yourself whether you get the Z6 or where you get this. For people that love that optical viewfinder experience, looking through that prism is what makes it for a lot of people using the DSLR. And again, we've implemented a beautiful prism in this and you're gonna get that clean optical experience that, uh, that almost no lag because you're dealing with the speed of light. And so if you're familiar with the DSLRs, um, you're gonna love this camera. All the things I will mention about it is that it has a dual SD card slot, but it has been upgraded to UHS-2 and that allows us to get a humongous buffer of 68 shots at 14-bit RAW. So that's a significant improvement over the D750, which was, I think, 14 shots at, uh, at, uh, in RAW. Uh, it's even bigger than the Z6 as well, twice the buffer as the Z6. So if you're shooting with a, a significant burst rate at seven frames per second, you can shoot for a long period of time with this. The other thing is that the battery life on this is, I think, second only to the D5 in terms of life. It's, I think, 2260 shots using the ENEL 15B battery. So a lot of things have gone into this. A lot of new technologies have gone into this. For more information on this, check out our website, our YouTube channel, because Chris and I have produced a little video on there. We'll drop that link in the comments section. And I gotta catch my breath because this is uh, another one of the great releases that we released at CES. What do you got? Well, I have something that unfortunately we can't really show you guys properly. Um, the next lens is something else that we, well actually, we, we pre-announced it last year. The pre-announcement was for the D6 and also for the 120 to 300 f2.8. Now, unfortunately we don't have one here, so I don't want to tease you guys uh, just talking about the, the tech specs of it. So we're going to go and leave that for a future episode. When we get one in here, we can actually show it off. Once I've played with it, I'll be able to give my, my thoughts on it. But what a tease! I know, I know. It's I even bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with that pre-announcement back in 2019, it was that in the D6. So, what do we now have? We have the D6. Now, uh, before we get on that, uh, we are going to tease you again. We're going to watch a very quick product tour on the D6, and then once we come back, Mark is going to go and tell you all about the new camera. It's here.
Wow, let me just catch my breath. Unbelievable. So we have it here. This is the D6 in my hands. And uh, just for you guys, if you want more information on this, we are going to drop a link in the comments section to a YouTube video that we did on the Z6, so you can uh, learn more about that. And you forgot to plug the P950 video that we had too on you when it was your turn. Okay, so we're going to drop that in the comments section as well. But now let's talk about the D6, okay? Because we are going back and forth. We're talking about cool picks. We're talking about Z series. We talked about the DSLR. And a lot of questions that we got at the trade show is, I remember we got this. Is Nikon going to stop producing F mount? Oh, I hear that all the time. Cameras <laughs> and lenses. We just came out with a 120 to 300 2.8. We just came out with a D780 hybrid. This is going to be a, a killer camera for hybrid shooters. And now we're talking about producing uh, uh, a camera for the high end professional, uh, uh, targeted probably towards this professional sports photographer, photojournalist. You know, the Rod Mars of the world that shoot for the Seattle Seahawks and things like that. And um, here it is. So, you know, just talking about the top couple of salient points on this camera is that we've essentially perfected the DSLR with the D5. How much better can it be? But you, you saw all you the features think. right you there. Really exactly. Wouldn't think. Uh, you wouldn't think, but for me, if I had to take my x-ray vision and look what's inside under the hood of this camera right here, it's more than the sum of its parts. Let's just talk about, for a second here, about the build quality, okay? So the build quality of this camera, uh, for people that have never used a camera of this caliber for before, I came in when it was a D2X, I've shot with D3, D3S, D4, D4S, D5, and now the D6, and it just has a rock a solid build quality, magnesium alloy all the way around, in terms of weather sealing. Yep. So if you want to take something out in the field um, and you need it to rely on in whatever weather condition, cold, hot, dusty, rainy, etc., this will hold up. It's got the best weather sealing out there. Now, the other thing about the camera is that it also has this brand new experience in the viewfinder. And again, we're talking about an optical viewfinder here in a day and age where mirrorless is taking over all the conversation. But this is the best, the most advanced DSLR that Nikon has ever created. And it is because of the autofocus system that we have completely revamped with this grid that you have before you here. So again, come to our website, our, our YouTube site, check out what that grid is all about. Basically, every single point on this system is cross type, okay? Um, there's more information on that on our YouTube channel. You can go and see the, the tech specs, but that means that the reliability of wherever you are framing your subject in there is gonna be as sensitive and most reliable as you can possibly get. In addition to that, we've also allowed the customer to customize, or the customer, the user to customize the autofocus grid. So check out the new group area AF options in there that you can customize. That's gonna be a game changer for people shooting sports because it allows them to uh, basically shape the way their autofocus grid is. In terms of the frame rate, okay, that's not even as fast as it can get. It can go faster than that, it's 14 frames per second. So what's the, what's the upgrade in 14 frames per second? Is that now you can capture shots like these. I mean, I was talking with Chris earlier about this feature, about this overlay darken option during multiple exposure. We've had that since the D5. But what we didn't have was the ability to shoot at 14 frames per second with continuous focus, continuous auto exposure. It gives you those extra added shots in between and you can do a shot like that in camera with that overlay darken option and just get that smooth succession of frames. Great for the Olympics coming up in um, this summer in Japan for those photographers who are looking to get some cool features like that. I mean, this uh, the, the body is pretty consistent when it comes to the, the features against the D5, but really the difference is, is the autofocus system. That'll be huge. The frame rate is advanced with an extra couple of frames per second. We've also improved some of the video functions in here. Again, check out our video on YouTube to check it out. And um, uh, we've now made it compatible with CF Express cards. So the new CF Express, it'll be backwards compatible. Also with XQD cards, uh, a couple of cool features here that I'll show you up on screen is that we've included a Kensington lock system on this camera now, the, the D6. MSRP pricing is up on our website now as well. And um, it's just gonna be the most advanced camera that we've ever released. And it goes perfectly with the gold standard, the gold ring series of Nikon lenses, all the way from the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recite them off from the right to the left. Let's see if I can do this. 500 millimeter PF, 300 millimeter 2.8, is that the 400 millimeter 2.8, 500 millimeter f4, 600 millimeter f5, 
five point oh f four sorry my bad uh, eight hundred millimeter five point six is that the uh, two hundred to four hundred one eighty to four hundred that's the on the left there. I think that's the 80 to 400, is it? And then on the camera itself is the 120 to 300. Did I get that right, or did I mess up on one of them, Chris? <laughs> I think you messed up on one of them, but you were going so quickly that on I'm the left hand I'll, side. I'll give you a pass. I'll okay. give you a pass. All right. On okay. It. Cool. Cool. Actually, I got it all right. No, I, I was right. I was right. <laughs> what can I do? It's like uh, I can't lose. I can't lose. All right. So um, that is the D6. I've had the chance to shoot with it. What I love about this is the workflow. From a, a perspective of the press photographer out there that's in the field, check out our video. You can swipe up to rate images. You can transfer it to your cell phone right away without an adapter. You right, because can... you, you kind of gloss over. This is the first time we've had built-in Wi-Fi, built-in GPS, and built-in Bluetooth. So this can work to your smartphone with SnapRidge. It can work to your computer if you need to. You can go and get even more advanced the WT6, but it also has that built-in GPS. So if you want to go and have that data, on every single photo, it's, it's right there. It's, it's amazing, it's first time ever. We've always had those features on our entry level cameras. We've never had it on a flagship model. We've had to buy a thousand dollar adapter and attach it here, which you can still get for added wireless functions such as FTP, et cetera, et cetera, faster transfer speeds, but built in. You have the value of getting the built in GPS but also the, build, the better workflow with the built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth to your phone. I like the fact that you can crop now you know, different uh, ratios and things like this, and uh, you can rate right off with these flicks on, on, the, on the camera. So the workflow is top rate. You can do it in the field and not have to wait to get to your computer later it's on. So easy. Okay, I'm excited about that. And the DSLR, the F mount is so strong right now. We've just re released two cameras for it, a couple of high-end production lenses. Um, I'm spent. I'm spent. For the rest of this episode, it's just you, yep, Chris. you're done. Woo! So, Mark is so excited about DSLRs that he's going to go and plug his ears because I'm now going to finish us off by talking about some new Z lenses. So, the new Z lenses that we've just come out with along with the D6, one of them being this amazing new compact travel zoom. So, this is a 24 to 200 millimeter non S-line lens. Now, I'll make that a point, but I really want to stress a couple things about this lens. So this 24 to 200, obviously um, very versatile, but what do you think of when you hear an ultra zoom compact uh, uh, lens? You kind of go, well, okay, it's going to be incredibly versi versatile for when I go traveling, but I know that the image quality might not stand up to my f2.8. It's not going to be as good as maybe what I'm used to with my primes. This 24 to 200, because of that new Z mount, is spectacular. In terms of optical quality, I am absolutely blown away by this. And not only optical quality, but when they design this, this type of lens, they take a lot of things into, into consideration. So they know that you're going to be walking around with this all day long. They know that, they, that you don't want this to be really heavy and unwieldy while you're actually shooting with it. Mm -hmm. So they actually designed, because we have a much larger rear um, mount now, they designed a lot of the bigger, heavier elements to be near the back of the lens, which means the center of the gravity is further back, which means it's actually just more comfortable to carry around and hold. So it's actually really kind of cool from a design point of view, not only just how amazing the optics are, but what they built into to make it more comfortable when you're shooting. Uh, something else people sometimes worry about if they hear that this is a non-S-line lens is they go, okay, well, that's the first full-frame non-S-line lens you guys have done. What's the build quality like? Well, I'm actually amazed that this is still fully weather-sealed, just like all of our other full-frame S-line lenses. So you're getting amazing build quality. You're getting amazing uh, optical quality. And it really, if you actually have a look here, I have the kit lens, the 24 to 70 uh, f2 point, uh, sorry, f4. This is the kit lens that comes with the, uh, the, the Z6 and the Z7. And then you have the 24 to 200 the, right next to it here. So it's not that much larger. So it's actually kind of cool that you're getting that much longer, more versatile of a lens. The image quality is still there. You're still getting amazing build quality while you're not carrying around a huge, heavy, uh, heavy lens. That's what I find with the... S, well, not just the S, but all the Z series, we have a picture of a, a group of all of them. They're pretty consistent in size. Yeah. Whether it's the 14 to 30, to the uh, the one that you just showed there, to the 24 to 200, to the kit lens, et cetera, et cetera. 
I guess that's the power of the Z-mount, is that the fact that with that larger rear element, we can have these new optical designs that are pretty consistent. And Z-mount can't lose because you have this optimal image quality in what you would consider you know, more of a kind of consumer price point. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, so we have the non-S-line lens and we have the brand new S21.8. So now this kind of fills out all of our primes. We have our 20, we have a 24, we have a 35, a 50, and 85. So this really helps cover if you're uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, traveling, which to be honest, I'm really excited for this lens purely for the fact that I do a lot of traveling, I do a lot of landscape photography, but more in particular, I do a lot of star photography. So star photography with this type of lens is amazing because not only is it a very fast aperture, is a very wide angle, but the aberrations are incredibly well controlled with this lens. So what do I mean about aberrations? Well, uh, so the, the uh, image you're seeing here, if you actually zoom into the top right hand corner, you'll actually see the high point light sources, which are the stars. Um, they're not actually just points of light. They're actually kind of spread out. Uh, we, we call it sagittal coma flaring. So that, that flare is something that is very difficult to control with uh, for with a lot of lenses. With the Z lenses, specifically, well, the, the Noct, um, we made a big point about it, but also this lens as well. So this is this uh, image here was actually shot with the 20, uh, the, the 20 mil uh, f1.8 S. And as you can see, there's very, very little sagittal coma flaring uh, up in the top right hand corner there. So really, really well controlled so that for anybody who's doing landscape, star photography, for me, this is just gonna be an absolute uh, home run of a lens. I, I cannot wait to get out, uh, shoot some stars, and just drool over the image quality that I've come to come to love with all of our uh, all of our Z lenses. You had me at sagittal coma flare. You had me at <laughs> sagittal coma flare. Oh, how, how are we going to move on from that? Okay, <laughs> but I mean, just to harp on those two lenses right now. Those are full frame lenses, full right? Full frame. But you can do the math at home. I mean, you can compute it. I have a Z50 that I just got this Christmas, and I mean, you could still, the great thing about it is you can still use it on the DX format for the Z system as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and right? I'll actually, so I actually kind of forgot about something. So you bring up a really good point. So the Z6 and Z7, built-in stabilization, right? right? They have a sensor that actually shifts. So you might be thinking, okay, well, 24 to 200, you put that onto the six and seven, no big deal. But what happens when I put it onto a Z50 that does not have uh, sensor stabilization? Well, we don't have to worry about it. 24 to 200 actually has VR built into it. So you get um, amazing VR capabilities when you put it on a six and a seven, but if you did get a Z50 for Christmas, you still have VR with that system. Same with the 70 to 200 2.8, right? Same with the 70 to 200. Yes, okay. So. And that was an S-line lens with the 20 millimeter 1.8. Sagittal yep. coma flare, sagittal coma flare, be gone. Oh, wow, okay. So eight new products and uh, everywhere from high-end Z to, you know, midline Z to, you know, advanced DSLR to professional grade flagship DSLR. This new 120 to 300 that you tease us about and you just <laughs> dare not bring on the show. How dare you? But I, I know why you do it because Chris is going to come back with another episode, show that lens, and going forward, this gentleman over here, the tech guru at Nikon, is going to revamp our show, take it to the next level in 2020, and be our new host. As I anoint you for the Nikon <laughs> TV episode viewers out there, it was my pleasure to do the first 21 episodes with you guys. Uh, it was uh, two years of almost an episode every month. Yep. We missed last month because uh, we were busy at CES and you were busy having a baby and things like that so you couldn't help. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, we had a great time. I'm looking forward to all the new episodes. Uh, thanks to the team here at uh, Nikon Canada for producing this show. Uh, my favorite episodes, uh, we did an episode on location in Vancouver with Joe McNally right after his workshop. I got to sit down for an hour. You, me, and the viewers got to pick his brain and uh, get all the insights from him. And even talking with some of our Nikon Canada ambassadors and, you know, having some fun with the Cruise versus game out there. Uh, you know, picking on Christian for, uh, you know, not knowing the 70 to 200 oh, no. FL so versus you, you the 2.8 VR. That's all good. But I, I, did. I, I thought did. I did. I did. I did. I did. It was the 35mm 1.8S versus the 50mm 1.8S that Chris tried to stub me on. So good times here at Nikon TV. I can't wait to follow along. 
like, comment, and subscribe from the other end of the, uh, of the Facebook page. So uh, good luck with that, guys. And I look forward for you, my friend, to take it to more episodes in 2020. So guys, like, subscribe, and um, follow us also on our YouTube channel, which we drop links for the new products out there. We also have these episodes on uh, YouTube if you'd like. But until then, we will see you next time on Nikon TV.